Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of The Enthusiast Experiment. Uh, this is not trying something new, for me at least. I have had this particular beverage before. Uh, just something I wanted to share with you guys. It was a great experience, and uh, yeah, we'll get right into it. So typical fashion, got my notebook here. We'll uh, hit some of the highlights, and we'll jump in for a tasting. Uh, in case you do not recognize this, it is Pliny the Elder uh, by Russian River Brewing. So it is a beer. Uh, and let's go. So this was actually, um, the reason it's special is it's kind of commemorating a uh, recent big event in my life. I just had a birthday, another decade down, so into the, the 30s, and my girlfriend was really awesome and took me up to Russian River, which neither of us had been before, um, just to kind of hang out for the day, amongst other things. But So it was really cool, bought a case while I was there. Um, again, I've had this before, but you know, just to kind of commemorate and, and enjoy uh, the beer. So this was 65 bucks. It is 12 bottles, um, which isn't too terribly bad. I'll let you guys do the math for that. I know it's probably a little bit more expensive in the stores. Obviously, this was at the brewery, um, and for that price, I couldn't pass it up. So grab those. It is a double IPA. Uh, it has a couple of different hops in it. It is Amarillo, uh, Centennial, CTZ, and uh, Simcone hops. Simcoe? Simcoe, sorry, not cone. Simcoe hops. Uh, it, they do say that you should drink it fresh and keep it cold so you can tell the the 12 pack did come cold and you know refrigeration to refrigeration you don't want to make sure they get warmed up so the rest of the beers are actually in the fridge already uh, this guy I just took out a moment ago to, to drink with you all and uh, it's an ABV of 8% the original gravity is 1.070 IBUs uh, I had to do a little hunting around on different sites because it's not on Russian River's exact site but it's about 100 is what keeps popping up um, so definitely a more of a bitter beer. You'd kind of expect that from a double IPA. Um, no surprises there. And then I guess one other little tidbit of note is both on rate beer and beer advocate. This is a uh, rated at a perfect 100. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. The only other thing I would like to point out, it's since it does say drink fresh, one of the things that they do, and you probably won't be able to see it, but on the bottle here, it has the date that the beer was bottled. So that way you make sure that you're getting a fresh beer. Um, and this was just a couple days ago, so that's kind of exciting. So let's get right into it. Go ahead and open it up. Like I said, I've had this before, but I did want to share it with you guys, and I think it's definitely worth um, mentioning. And I got a few here, so if you're in the Bay Area, hit me up. We'll share one. I mean, right away, just opening that bottle, you can really smell the aroma coming off of the beer, which is one of the best things about Pliny, I think. Um, and it's kind of weird. I've grown to love this beer more and more. I can't kind of think the more that I've had it. I had it a bunch uh, when I first moved to the Bay Area. Um, the Whole Foods around here tend to have a pretty good stock uh, when they would get them in, but they would sell out within a day or two. Uh, so you got to get it at the right timing. But So you can tell the beer is really, really clear, beautiful color, um, awesome head. Uh, you can see a few of the bubbles here, so it does have a decent amount of carbonation. Off of the smell, I mean, uh, yeah, you guys should really try this if you haven't already. Um, it's extremely hoppy, but more of the citrus slash pine hoppy, which is kind of weird. I don't know if it's a word play, pliny, piney. But for me, it's definitely very woodsy, kind of like grapefruit, lemon peel, um, citrus. Just a great aroma. And you can smell a little bit of the malt too, but not like a sweetness, but just like a hint of like that and then the yeasty like bready character that you would get from beer. Yeah, that's something that makes this good. So um, one of the great things about Pliny is it's definitely got a, a body of bitterness, but it's not too much. Some of these IPAs, double IPAs, West Coast IPAs really are trying to push the envelope, which is great too. I like those. Uh, push the envelope uh, as far as they can go for bitterness. Pliny does a good job of reeling that back in so it does have a nice malt top balance which is kind of crazy for something that has so many ibus at least theoretically again I, that wasn't confirmed but it definitely comes through in the mouth um so nice balance there getting definitely a ton of hops even now it's still lingering on the palate and then a nice wash of cleaning bitterness comes through so not like super astringent like vacuum cleaners all over your mouth like oh, what am i doing I need food with this or something. Not at all. This is definitely a drinking beer. At 8%, I would pace yourself, um, unless you're just looking to get smashed. Um, down a couple of these and you'll be all right. <laughs> but 
Uh, this is definitely a nice take it easy sipping beer. It'd be great with food, but even right now by itself, I haven't had anything to eat in a while. The the bitter finish is still lingering. You guys can see I just had that one sip there. It's great. Uh, still a lot of that citrusy kind of stuff going on. Again, like I, grapefruit and lemon peel come through a lot. Um, and then just great hops, a grassiness, but like in a good way. Um, maybe that's the pininess, like woods. <laughs> um, and then the malt is just there. I don't like when malt shows too much for me in beers. I like my beers to be a little bit more on the bitter side as opposed to the malty side. Um, but this has enough malt there to still like hang with the bitterness instead of get dominated by it. Um, I'm going to take another sip. Sorry. Yeah. And that's another great thing about uh, these guys making sure you say drink it fresh. You can really, the beer just has a really nice crispness and it doesn't get flabby. It's very tight. <clears throat> and uh, the carbonation is good. Head's hanging on pretty well. I'm sure that would be there almost all the way down. Uh, but it's not overly carbonated. It's not too crazy. It's closer to, it's not quite a cask beer, right? So like when you go to a, uh, a brew pub, usually they'll have like one or two other beers on cask. Um, it's not quite that reserved in the carbonation department, but I would say it's between like a cask and a normal keg type beer. Uh, maybe it's the bottle. I had it on keg a few times too, but anyways, I'm rambling now. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to go back to finishing this guy. I appreciate you guys for swinging by. Basically, it was just celebrating with all of you and thanking you for swinging, swinging by all the time and checking out what we do here. Um, but yeah, if you can get your hands on some of this stuff and, and enjoy, let me know what you think down in the comments, if you've had it before, or if you have anything similar. Uh, there's a few other beers that are on my bucket list, so I'd be curious to see what you guys uh, think of this and then if you have any recommendations. But thanks again for swinging by. Please uh, share, like, subscribe. Let's get the word out there. I know there's a ton of enthusiasts out there, and I just enjoy learning and sharing some of the things that I'm passionate about. So until next time, take it easy.